She was far more than an actress. Mona Hammond was a pioneer, not only for her work on stage, screen and radio, but for her tireless support for black British actors. I'll ask Jules to babysit. He never says no to me. You most likely know her as no-nonsense grandma Blossom Jackson in EastEnders. I could really do with a job. A character as resolute as the woman who played her. What would you say to three pounds an hour? Show me them dishes and I'll lick them into shape for you. <laughs> Before Albert Square, though, she portrayed Auntie Susu in influential Channel 4 sitcom Desmond. The show gave the audience an insight into black family life in working-class Peckham in South London. And it gave Rada scholar Mona a chance to flex her comic muscles too. Everybody, this is my little Willy. <laughs> Tributes have poured in for the actress of Jamaican and Chinese descent. Former EastEnders star Shel Ferguson held her for 91 fantastic years of inspiration. Former Coronation Street star Ray Fearon wrote, R.I.P. Jamaican Queen. Gone, but never forgotten. And Michelle Gell, who plays Hermione in the stage adaption of Harry Potter and also former EastEnders actress, simply paid tribute to a trailblazer, a queen. Not only was she a trailblazer in parts for herself, you know, and a role model to so many. She wanted to diversify the industry to address some of the structural problems that actors of colour and people of colour working in theatre face. It's a testament to her remarkable life that Mona's greatest gift to the world wasn't her iconic characters, but the legacy she leaves behind. Well, joining us now is actor and a friend of Mona, uh, Danny John Jewell. So good to have you with us tonight, just to really remember Mona. And you were such a close friend of hers, and you could describe her opening the doors for you and people like you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, what, what people don't get to see is the, the amount of time, she, you know, these people are doing the Royal Shakespeare Company and the National Theatre, doing all this classical, uh, you know, stuff. And then, of course, you know, you get a soap opera and the people think that's the, the strength of your um, career. But... She's just, even back then, she was a trailblazer, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, she she's just so... Like Shirley MacLaine um, said about Sammy Davis Jr, she said it as if, as if light came out of him, and that's exactly what, what Mona was like. She was like our Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> when she walked into the room, everyone wanted to be in show business, mm. and that's the kind of effect that she had on people. And what made me really realise how much of an impact she had on, you know, her peers, who have, you know, understand that struggle, was to see the WhatsApp group, you know, visit Mona, excuse me. Um, there was huge, I mean, people that are on big shows, you know, mm -hmm. Joe Martin, Su Suzette Llewellyn, who was also um, a, a friend of mine, and, you know, Donna Kroll, and all the actresses, ev it was like, it was like a, uh, an online ballet of, OK, well, I'll do that, you go there, I'll just go in tomorrow, you know, and everything was done for her. And these were actors who came together to yeah, see Yeah, yeah, these are people her. who are on television, visible, wow. you know. And, Dan, is it right that her, her, one of her last roles was in a, a short film of yours? What was that like? Yes, I could not <laughs> believe it. Um, you, you know, of, of course, I'd done lots of different little workshops. There's all these little script readings that young actors want people to read their script. There was a thing called Off the Grove in, in Lubbock Grove um, where, you know, a young writer could put the script in and they would gather all these professional actors to come do the scripts. And people like Mona, all these kind of things. And, you know, we, they don't really get enough credit for it. And, and I don't think enough of the young people understand what they put in, mm -hmm. that you can be, you know, in all these shows and, and it doesn't become sort of uh, stigmatised or unusual to see. You know, it's pretty normal that you, you see people running up and down on TV shows and, and you know, the, the Royal Theatre and all that. It's been amazing to read through some of the, the tributes today. So many sort of glowing reviews of her as a person, as, as, a, as an actor as well. How, how will you remember her? What will be the, the lasting memory for you? I'll remember um, taking a really hard um, think about phoning up Mona to ask her to play this part for me, because I knew she wasn't that well. Yeah. And it was a bit of a, a, a dilemma for me, but I did. And she came up and she turned up um, you know, did a, a full day's filming. Um, most of the time, when she was dressed in a dressing gown and slippers outside, and um, um, it, it, I was just, you know, so honoured to have uh, 
and, and that being the last thing she did. She was a great... I suggest anybody watch her first scene as Auntie Susu in Desmond's. <laughs> it's on YouTube. Yes. That's when I was first introduced to her. Amazing, incredible. Uh, yes. Danny John Jewell, such a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Mona Hammond. Mona Lovely Hammond. tribute as well. Thank you.